Good morning, YouTubers. Mike Martins here with the Mike Martins channel. Thanks for joining me, everybody. I'm feeling a lot better. Thanks for the, the get well wishes soon. Man, I got food poisoning. Was it uh, Sunday? Yeah, Sunday. We went to Swiss Chalet. Oh, man. Did that ever cripple me? That crippled me. It left me in a, in a pretty bad state. The food wasn't... I don't know what it looked like. I don't know. It just didn't look right to me. I've, e I've eaten at Swiss LA many times my whole life and I've never had this kind of experience. And there was one lady serving the whole restaurant too. And food came cold and it was, I don't know, it wasn't a good experience. Pretty bad experience actually. Anyways, so I'm feeling better. Thanks for the uh, get well wishes from all the, all the uh, viewers out there. Thanks so much. Okay guys, so what's going on? Well, I got some news for you guys. And let's go, let's let's do some recapping, okay? Remember when the markets took a huge tumble and uh, seven, uh, late 79, things didn't look good, 80, 81. Remember? Do you remember that? Well, you can look it up. You can look at the recession bars and you can see it for yourself uh, on a graph. And you could actually see where things basically did not go right. Or didn't do, or didn't do right. Or didn't do well. It's very simple uh, to see where things went wrong. Now, here's the deal. It wasn't until 2007 and 2008 where they started inventing quantitative easing, right? To keep this crap going, right? Instead of letting these companies basically default and people starting over and, you, you know, you get where I'm going, right? People like... Def the banks defaulting and people and companies and, and people and, and mainly the companies would have to start over and a lot of people would have defaulted too and, went, and, and a lot of a lot of it would have went, went down a lot of the the bad debt would have been washed out a lot of the uh, grayness the gray areas that were there that shouldn't have been there on bad books and stuff would have been kind of all washed out and we would have almost started to see gains almost immediately why because they would have just raised interest rates now, if you go back to 1980-81 and see what happened, they actually raised interest rate interest rates astronomically to these crazy interest rates. But almost immediately, you started seeing a recovery. Almost immediately. Everything started getting back on track. Uh, they started cleansing out all the bad debt and basically put things right, right. But here's the problem. Here's the problem. Uh, currencies and stuff and, 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 and had value to them, right? Even though America had the petrodollar and stuff, it still had a strong and thriving exporting economy. So did Canada. Canada had a lot of factories, believe it or not. Younger people watching this today will be like, Canada factories? What are you talking about, Mike? Yeah. Canada had a bunch of factories and, and to be frank with you guys, it had uh, a good, for its population per capita, uh, exporting was really good and at the time you know we'd export honey we'd export sugar we'd export um, heck tons of canned food uh, we, we you know we would do a lot of good stuff right and create a lot of uh, jobs now what's happened is you're getting all this noise just all this noise about jobs uh, uh, job jobs created in Canada blah 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 and the economy is looking good and job numbers are good, but they're all public sector jobs. They're not private sector. While the public publics of the private sector shrank by, I think it was 20,000, uh, negative 20,000. So that's really bad. Uh, you know, they're like, oh, well, but look at all these government jobs we created. Nobody cares about government jobs. Nobody cares. There's no money in government jobs because they're not supporting the, the private sector. The private sector supports the public sector. People need to remember that. And if they can't get that to work, do you know what they do after? It's a little secret. They raise your taxes. Whether it's property, whether it's off your wages, whether if it's any way humanly possible, they will raise your taxes. Yes. While Canadians slave and work their way, work their way to the, work their, work themselves to the bone, they're having a really tough time, you know, getting things in, in order right now, right? Okay, so Americans too. Now, listen to this. Why is Canada sending, 
I don't know how many billions of dollars in foreign aid. What, what for? What's the point, right? I never understood what for, the whole point of foreign aid, right? But, sorry guys, it's kind of cold in here. What do I know, right? But, Go ahead, when you're ready. Hi, extra large dark roast with one cream. All right, That's it, thank you. Sure. you. I want to thank my Patreon supporters this morning for taking care of coffee for me. I actually use it to buy coffee. And whatever little scraps I make off AdSense, I use that to just better my computer and better, I already did, so my computer's on fire right now. It's doing so good. How are you, my brother? You? Tapsy wapsy. Yeah. Thank you. you See you tomorrow. See you okay, back to back to basics. So, what did they do in the early '80s? They just raised interest rates to the, up the wazoo. They had to, because that was the only way to fix against inflation. So, I'm afraid of stagnation. Now, I'm afraid of the prices of things going up. Okay, I'm afraid of the prices of things going up, but nothing, 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 uh, the prices of things continue to go up, but wages, which haven't gone up in years, and everything still continue the same, but, you know, it happened, you know, a zombie-like state of Japan, right? Look at the zombie-like state of Japan, but the average house, you can still pick up a house for in and around 100,000 Canadian dollars in Japan. So you're not stuck where in Canada or, or parts of the US, you're stuck with these $2 million teardowns that no one could afford to get into, right? So you got to look at that kind of perspective and kind of understand that whole perspective of things, right? It's very important. Like, well, you see, Mike, Japan's been in this whole stagnant and everything, you know, doesn't move and there's no growth in the economy. But, you know, the price of food maybe goes up here and there, and the price of gas goes up here and there. But the price of things in Japan are still manageable. They're still kept within manageable, you know, where here you see the price of everything go up, but nothing uh, when it comes to wages or anything go up, right? So a lot of the employers are getting the spotlight on them saying, well, you're going to be paying your employees more money. No. Capitalism works if wages stay in line with inflation, and that's never happened, right? That was our big mistake. Wages never went with, with the whole thing. So what do they do? They hire, especially for the service industry, they hire a bunch of uh, people that just arrived to Canada. And why? Because they could boss them around and threaten them to send them back to their country. They'll pull a PMO on them. You know, start threatening them with damaging letters and stuff. So they pull a PMO. And, and, uh... That's not good when they do stuff like that because then people start getting scared and worried about their jobs and worried about um, what's going on, right? So that is pretty bad. So this way, so here it is. Let me tell you guys something, a little secret. I have a little insider that I know that tells me uh, that worked for one of these fast food places and told me they get hundreds if not thousands of resumes from locals to work. They do. The local Canadians or local Americans, he, he told me, per month, they get hundreds if not thousands of, of job applications. But they don't get hired. They prefer to hire people from overseas so they don't form unions, they don't organize in this. So when they keep telling you guys, oh, you know, uh, by the way, uh, um, the Canadian doesn't want to work in the fast food industry. That's absolute, that's an that's an absolute bald faced lie, because the amount of now they've been actually burning and destroying um, application forms that were handed in like manually, they've been burning them and destroying them so that they could uh, basically say, well, we never received anything from locals, so that's why we need more more people to come into the country to to come and work these positions, which is a, an absolute bald faced lie. It's an absolute bald faced lie. They're destroying application forms from these fast food giants faster than you could imagine. 
and they keep using the, the, the term you're overqualified if you do go back, which is a lie. So that's the problem. And now they're hiring seniors to do the job now to replace the teenagers because they feel that seniors need the money more to eat than, they, than the teenagers do. So it's a kind of uh, situation where nothing is really transparent. Corporations uh, avoid paying taxes at all costs. Um, I, I think if, if, if Canada wants to be more competitive with their small businesses, I think what Canada needs to do is basically give the grace of what the corp the big corporations have so it'd be fair. A lot of the small corporations pay a lot of, we pay a lot of, I pay a lot of tax. I pay a lot of money in taxes, I do. So if it was, able, if we were able to be like, if I was be able to get the grace like Amazon does, where they don't pay this, they don't pay that, they're allowed to do this, they're allowed to do that, and I'm allowed to do the same thing that Amazon did, then I would be happy with that because then this would, I would fall on better grace with saving money and reinvesting money and moving money around. It would be a lot easier for me, you know what I'm saying? Um, as a small business. But unfortunately, I don't get those benefits of not paying taxes in the, uh, like Amazon doesn't pay their fair wages and they're, they're, you know, I'm not picking on Alphabet or Amazon themselves. I'm just telling you guys what's going on, right? In a bigger spiel of things. If Canadian companies were allowed to get away with what Amazon was doing, like mom and pops companies, because the governments don't don't bother. I mean, I'm talking about the Canadian mom and pops business were to get away with what Amazon's doing or other big corporations like Walmarts and stuff, then maybe and 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 pay zero for shipping basically or get free shipping type of thing like they do, so we could a, a small businesses from in Canada could afford the shipping, and people could get to work from home and start shipping and exporting, you know, Jeff Bezos made billions of dollars selling things to people, right? And it's very, it's not that hard selling to people here in Canada over, over the, uh, the mail system. But the only problem is, is we pay more for shipping. If, if Amazon paid for the shipping we did, they'd be closed up in two, two days to be done. They, they couldn't, if they paid the same shipping we do, they don't. And that's the problem here. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I would like to know how you guys feel about this. How you guys... <sighs> God, help me, bad. How you guys are coping with this? How you guys are doing out there? Mike Martin's here signing out just here at the shop. And another beautiful, blissful day ahead of me. Got a few things ahead of me to do today. A few, uh, few projects to finish off and I'll be... Uh, making some more videos for you guys. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And thank you Patreon supporters for this coffee today.